Hello, this is Al Edlund. This is the third uh, solution that we have been investigating for using Visio 2010's new functions of containers and lists. The previous two were uh, demonstrating uh, how we might use them to diagram application connectivity and how we might use them for using, or rather to do drill down on servers to uh, diagram uh, things like disk, uh, physical disks, uh, logical disks, and, and component attributes. Uh, we're going to continue using uh, the data model that we introduced earlier and in this case, what we're going to look at is attributes for links. Uh, this one can get interesting because you, you start getting into almost uh, a, lo well, a lot of accounts that do heavy networking will have uh, vendor products such as Cisco and Cisco Works. Uh, for our solution, uh, using the model that we've been uh, uh, that we previously introduced is we're going to have a table for network links and a network link will have port data at both ends of the link. Port data will be associated with components and obviously since we're into networking uh, components have to live somewhere so we will have some form of location information. Uh, for both components and port data there will be network addressing data. So let's go back to uh, our, our Visio diagram and see what we might want to continue using. When we did the component attributes drill down, we introduced containers with list objects in them, and the list in them could either have surrogate shapes, uh, which we would apply data graphics to, or we might have list items uh, that we have uh, applied information to. Um, for these diagrams, we've stepped outside of how we normally implement this application, and we've put data record sets into the uh, drawing. This gives us the ability that when, and for instance, if I select a uh, port from the uh, ports list items, uh, select it, say data, uh, we can go show the linked row, and Visio will take us to the specific information for that port data. So we want to keep some of these things. Uh, the ability to have lists embedded in containers, the ability to select whether we're going to do uh, a list item uh, as part of our display or our uh, visualization, or whether we want to use a surrogate shape. So let's go into the drawing. And there we go. Uh, this drawing here, or, or this application here, is the VizRack locations, which we introduced previously. Uh, let's select a row shows us the racks in that row. Uh, we'll select two individual racks and draw the rack elevations. Let's draw a rear view. It's preloading the drawing as we've done in, in other uh, solutions. Put the racks on the page, install the components into the rack based upon what's in the database. Install the cables in this case because we're uh, looking at a rear view. And zoom in. Previously, if we had done the components attributes, we'd select a, a server, do a data 
and uh, pull up the attribute data. In this case, what we'll do is we'll pull up a link. The red tells us it's fiber optics data attribute data. Now, as a conscious decision for each of these solutions to, when we open a form, bring up a brand new connection to our data source. Uh, this has an impact on performance because a, a big chunk of it, of our performance is getting to the database, but it also allows us to use this form in, in other uh, places. So here we are with our link attributes form. We come up here to the top container. Uh, we have our link data. And just as we did in the component attributes by selecting one of our surrogate shapes, it will open a, re a report in a report viewer to give us the detailed data, uh, which can be much more extensive than what we're using here in the data graphic. For both sides of the link, uh, our first uh, connection to the link data is our port data. Uh, in this case, uh, you'll uh, see that we, for the port data, we're using a surrogate shape rather than a list item shape. Uh, because we're using a surrogate shape, uh, we have a lot more real estate to play with, and we can apply uh, data graphics and, and pull off text. For the port container, we've got a list of uh, actually two embedded containers which have embedded lists. The first container has the port information, the second one has the network address information for the port. And as we step further away from the link data to the component data, we get our component records and we also pull up the uh, location information. Some of the other things that might be considered for the component container is we might consider putting in a data graphic that actually shows what the shape looks like. For instance, if it's a, a patch panel or a PCI card, we could put that in there uh, in addition to the detailed data on, on those components. Uh, an extension for the link data might be an additional table in the database that has VLAN information. And then we could put list items underneath this to show what VLANs are associated with uh, this link data. But it gives us a pretty powerful tool for working with how do we want to drill down. Would I want to create diagrams for each of the cables in my network? Hardly. Uh, in a medium-sized uh, data center, it's not unusual to see tens of thousands of cables. But it does give us the ability to uh, pull up an individual cable and pull up the detail information on it. Hope this helps. This is Al Edlund.